My name, Parnell Fisher, branch of service, United States Air Force. Time in Vietnam, late 63 to fall of 1969. I lived in Benton, Arkansas, and we only had a school for black students that went to the sixth grade. Since I was not allowed to go to the Benton Junior High School or the Benton High School, they had to bus me to Little Rock. Well, I graduated from the 11th grade. Somewhere along that line, uh, I don't know if it was burnout, I didn't see much going for me at that time. I had a talk with a recruiter, kind of a short talk. Now this was in 1950, and I have to tell you from 1950 to 1954 was my first hitch. Came back in in 1959. I guess the only time I got my first class citizenship, because we were considered second class citizens as far as black people were concerned, particularly here in some of the other states, was when I joined the military. When we met, I say we, it, was, it, was, uh, it must have been 30, 40 new Air Force recruits. We were put on uh, a train for San Antonio, Pullman cars, I mean, overnight accommodations. We were all assigned different uh, uh, sleeping accommodation. And they, they started to mix us up right there on that train. So we got to San Antonio, Texas. We were all just recruits. No blacks, no whites, no Mexicans, no Latinos, no Italians. So it was more interesting than it was, uh, uh, let's say, intimidating, if you will. When I got the assignment to Vietnam, I still didn't take that as a, as a scary situation because I'd been in a bit of the Korea War. From 66 to late 67, I was assigned to a gunship squadron in Vietnam on the AC-47. It's a C-47 converted to gunner. Puffed Imagine Dragon, they call us. Uh, spooky, two nicknames. When you put one of the guns on land, it's like water hoses with red soda out of it. It's fast firing, 7,000 rounds a minute. You put three guns on line and you could deliberate this house in one short burst. We had instances where our patrol guys would get trapped or, or, or whatever and they need some help. You know, keep the enemy's heads down or destroy them if you can so we can get out, get our guys out of there. Silver Star. The C-47 has a pair of doors that open on the left side way back toward the very end of the aircraft. Well, in the gunship, they left the rear door on there, took the forward door off, and they mounted a gun right there in that door. It's not the most comfortable thing to throw flares out of. We had a flare launcher over here, but it, it didn't work half the time. It was too slow. So the engineer would come back and help the loadmaster launch those flares. Standing in this door between the gun and the door, he would set the flare up. And if it was a little pause, because you got to make a big circle or you do something, you don't just throw them out. You know, we had our space and we liked to get them. And I heard this thing go whoop, and the the flare fell. He had it up to hand to me, and I'm I'm going to pivot around and, and throw it out the door. When I look around, you hear that flare clanking back in there. You don't have a lot of room behind you. You got a box here with flares in it. The engineer standing behind you. If he take two steps backward, he's against the other wall. That's how small that aircraft is. So we got all the lights out. The only light we got is a rotating beacon on the vertical stabilizer. And when that thing went off, I knew that was it, but I didn't want to believe that was it. I immediately got this parachute all around the back of me, but there's a flare under it somewhere, and I got to find the flare. So I'm grabbing a parachute and I got my hands on the flare and got it to a point where I gathered that and enough stuff to throw it out the door. And it went out, but it hit the slipstream and went immediately in that direction. Now the shroud lines, that's the thing that connect the canopy to the flare, catches in that little gap at the door. The canister is floating around. It's kind of moving up and down to the slipstream. The chute still hung in the door partially out of the door. I gotta find the shroud lines to cut them loose. I just went to work. It's just it's just training, reaction, and and, 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 and and what you need to do when you need to do it. 
I get my knife out, and it's bright now. If Charlie had, a, if Charlie got a target, he's got one now. And with me hanging out the door, I finally got it to just go out that way. I can't think of what was on my mind except cutting a line, but there was a lot of confusion in here. So when I, when I crawled backwards on my knees and pulled myself up in the gun, I think I kicked the last piece of parachute out. I'm not, I think it was the engineer or the gun. I'm not sure which now, I don't remember. Stuck a cigarette in my mouth. I was standing there holding on to the gun. I still had the knife in my hand. Never lost that knife. I took a drag of that cigarette, and that's probably the best cigarette drag I ever had. One thing about Vietnam, you learn to get along with somebody, a lot of somebodies. Because if you don't, it's, it's, it's a disaster. That's one thing you learn. You really learn teamwork, and you meet a lot of interesting people. Pilots, navigators, flight engineers, they all come from everywhere. But uh, the crew you're assigned to, you, you generally create a really tight bond. I can say one thing about military duty. Once you make a friend, you're, you're pretty much friends for life. <laughs>